What's up guys, this episode we're gonna talk about device masquerading and how to add this gem so that you can log in as other users to make doing support and finding and reproducing bugs a little bit easier. This is really useful in development, but it can also be really useful in production if you have uh, the need to do some support and maybe log into someone's account and try to do um, something and reproduce a bug or maybe just you know help them with their account. So we're gonna talk about the Devise Masquerade gem and then I'd like to do a follow up where we talk about how this is actually implemented behind the scenes because it's actually rather interesting and um, not as complicated as you might think. So this gem is a extension for Devise so you're gonna have to have Devise installed in order to use it. Um, it basically just hooks in and you have a few methods that you can use. So you have device masqueradable, and uh, in your application controller, you'd put in a before filter masquerade user, and uh, then you have your user masquerade question mark methods and the ability for you to undo the masquerade uh, afterwards. So this is pretty straightforward. Uh, if you're used to devise, all these methods are kind of familiar. You use similar ones for current user and authenticate user. Um, and in this case, we are just doing masquerading instead. So what we'll need is we'll need some sort of admin area in order to go use this. So we'll go set that up and then we will um, uh, take a look at this. So the site I've got here is an open source project that I've got. Um, this is really straightforward. It's a link sharing app. I basically, you drop in a link and it will parse the open graph tags and then show up on the site and people can vote on it if they're interested. And one of the things that I would like to do to the admin area is to add the ability for me to log in as a user. So I wanna be able to click on a different user and click on a button up here to masquerade as that user so that I can log in as them and test things out in development. So with that said, this will save me a lot of time in development so we can go add this gem in and I'm gonna pull the gem from the latest version on uh, Ruby gems, so we will have that. We can then drop this in uh, to our gem file and go to our console and run the Rails server after running Bundler. So we will now have the gem in and once that has finished and restarted the Rails app, we can go add this link to um, into our admin views. So my admin is already scoped to admins only, of course, and that is gonna be important for this because you don't want average users to be able to log into someone else's account, so keep that in mind. Make sure that if you implement this feature, it's either only available in development or only available for admins, and it's probably a good idea to write tests for that to make sure um, that no non-admins can access it. So with that, we can then open up our, uh, because I'm using administrate for the admin area here, we can go into app views, and I've already generated the show view, and in the header actions section, this is where we can add a link to, uh, just like that as the masquerade path, so that comes from that gem, and this is gonna give us the ability to masquerade. So we'll add button class to that to make it look pretty. And we can go back to the readme and take a look at the other changes that we need to do. So for example, we need to go to the user model and make it masqueradable. So we'll go to the model user.rb and, oops, we'll go to user.rb and add that here at the end. And the gem also wants us to go into application controller.rb and put in a before action. Uh, I'm gonna change this to action so we don't get the deprecated warning and we'll put in the masquerade user here. And um, that's going to be it. So there is a couple helpers we can use to check to see if the user is masquerading and to also reverse the masquerade. But let's see if we get the link in the admin area and uh, we don't, 
because we are using the wrong variable name here. So let's fix that really quick. We are looking for probably uh, page.resource because of the admin that we're using. That would be the user variable. So we need to make sure we change that. We now have the login as button. So if we go open a new tab, so you can see that I'm logged in as myself, Chris O. And if I log in as this user, we are now logged in as test user. And refreshing our other tab, we see that we're logged in as test user. So that means that it successfully masqueraded us as that user. So what it's doing behind the scenes is it's actually taking the user ID that you have uh, and you're currently logged in as, and it's moving that to a different place um, called like masquerade user ID. So it knows who is doing the masquerading so you can undo it and go back to that user account. And since it moves that, um, then it replaces the current user ID with the masqueraded users. So whoever you choose to log in as, it makes that the current user ID and it checks for the presence of the masquerade user. And that way you can add like a bar at the top saying you are logged in as this user, which we're going to do right now. And then we can put a link in there and what it will say is it will check in both cases to see if you have a masquerade ID in your cookies. And if it does, then it will uh, display that header so that you can go and remove the current user and take the masquerade user and put them back as the current user. So it's pretty straightforward what it's doing, but they take care of everything for you. I just give you a couple helpers and a couple links and voila, you can build this feature into your app in like five minutes. It's really cool. So uh, what we need to do then is to go into our application.html.erb and at the top of the body, we want to put in our own nav um, and this can be a new nav that is to contain our masqueraded user, but we want to only show this nav stuff um, if the user is currently masquerading. So let's take a look at the helpers, they have user masquerade, and we can wrap this with that if user masquerade. We render this nav bar, and inside of this, we can have a link to uh, undo that. So if we say, paste this in, and now we have that reverse masquerade link. So if we save this, we should get a pretty much unstyled nav bar here at the top that says reverse masquerade. And if we click that, we go back to Chris O as the user. So we go back to my own account and we're automatically um, set up. So this is really, really seamless for us to be able to go do that. Now, uh, if we go back to the admin, you will notice that when we log in as test user again, this time, if we try to ask for the admin access, we don't get any access to it. There's no route that matches. So we are truly logged in as the other user. And the only way for us to know that we're logged in from a different account is they save that um, cookie in the session so that we know that masqueraded user. So you could do some extra stuff if you wanted to, to set up the admin area so that um, it would use that masqueraded user account, but I wouldn't really recommend that because um, this is gonna keep that really straightforward. No matter who you were logged into, you can only access the things that they have permissions for, and that's probably the best way to go about this. So we can paste in a little bit of CSS to clean up this nav bar and make it look pretty. But as far as that goes, we just had to add in a link and another link with a little wrapper around it to display this nav bar here. And we have a fully functioning masquerading feature in our app. And here is the styled version of it. So I made a quick little change to this. I added an alert style from Bootstrap uh, 3 and changed it to an alert warning. And that makes it all pretty so that at the top of the page, 
um, I can simply click the log out button and I am back to my current user account and anytime we see that bar above the nav bar we know that we are logged in and masquerading as a different user. Um, so that's as simple as that feature is. If you want to see the HTML that I wrote for that I'll put that in the notes below. Um, and yeah that is all you have to do to make devise masquerade work and to follow up on this episode and another one i would like to build this from scratch so that you can see how this works behind the scenes but as you might have noticed this is a devise specific uh solution which works really well but what if you rolled your own authentication or you're using something else like clearance? How do you go about building a generic solution for this that does the same things, it just may not provide you the um, wonderful integration to devise as this does? So we'll talk about that in another episode and follow up with this by building it from scratch. Till then, I will talk to you later. Peace.